Good afternoon, Coach. Good afternoon. We'll get started here with Dave and then Jamie. Hey, Doug. Good afternoon. Um, if you guys were in any other division right now, you'd kind of be in, in the basement. Um, but you're not in any division. You're in the NFC East. Uh, Great observation. You, yeah. I mean, how do you view this right now? Because your team hasn't played very well, but you still have a lot I, you of know, I, listen, I, I don't care about the rest of the league. I care about the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, obviously our division, um, you know, we're, we're, what are we still a half game back? I mean, it's look, it's, it, it is what it is. Um, you know, um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to pull out my inner bill Belichick and say, I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm focused on Baltimore. Go ahead, Jamie. And then Kristen, uh, Doug, uh, you know, in the other game yesterday from the division, uh, we saw a terrible injury to, to Dak Prescott. And here's a guy that's a huge rival of yours, but I know it, it brought out a lot of uh, well wishes from your team. And it sure had to bring some memories for you from Carson Wentz's injury. Can you talk about watching that and, and your thoughts? Well, I, you know, as, as I said with, uh, you know, with Angelo this morning that uh, my heart, my heart goes out to, to Dak and obviously his family and, you never want to see anybody, um, whether it be on your own team or uh, even a, a, a rival or anybody in the, in the league, you know, suffer these types of injuries, um, you know, because it, it, we know that this game is hard enough and injuries are a part of the game. But but these types of injuries where, you know, you could miss, obviously, the, the remainder of the season, uh, multiple weeks for sure. Um it's just uh, it's it's terrible, and and um, you know uh, having having gone through it with with our quarterback with Carson, um, you know, and 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 Dallas is in the in that same boat now. It's the next man up mentality, and and you know they'll rally and and, and be behind you know Andy Dalton and and get get him prepared and ready to go, just like we did with you know with Nick Foles back uh, you know a few years ago. So uh, you never want to see it you know happen. Um, my thoughts and prayers are obviously with with Dak and his recovery and uh, hope to see him out on the field soon. Kristen and then Rob. Good morning, Doug, or I should say good afternoon, Doug. Um, you know, yesterday we saw a good offensive performance, maybe not the best defensive performance. Going back a few weeks ago, it was the defense that showed up and the offense that was struggling. It feels like there's some inconsistency trying to get both sides to, to play at a high level. So what is it going to take to get both sides of the ball to to be on the same page? Well, yeah, I, you're absolutely right. Um, we haven't put four quarters or we haven't put, you know, two sides together, really three phases when you think special teams as well. Um, you know, and it's just, there, listen, there's, there's, there's enough. When you watch the tape again today, um, there's enough, there's enough, you know, football plays Offensively, defensively, and even on special teams, we need to be better in the in the in the return game. You know, kickoff return game. Uh, so there's enough plays out there that, you know, we have to continue to show our players and continue to teach and, and coach and 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 you know, with the amount of players, new players, new faces, young guys that are playing, you know, every every game's a new game, and so we're we're continuing to to coach and and uh, get these guys you know, ready to play and, and, and try to have complimentary football. If, if the defense struggles, the offense needs to pick it up. Right. And if the offense struggles, the defense needs to, needs to pick them up. And, and so we're, we're building towards that and, and we continue to work to, to hopefully uh, put that, put that all together. Rob and then Jimmy. Doug, while most of us outside the building would look at Travis's success and go, it's a surprise for those of you who see him, day in and day out, what are you seeing in practice that uh, allows you to, to think that he can go out there and have this impact that he's having? Well, I think the first thing is, you know, the, he, Travis has played in games, you know, NFL games uh, before. And, and so it's not new to him. It's, he, he's, he's, you know, um, even though he's new to us and, and, and new to, you know, the city of Philadelphia and, and obviously to you guys, you know, we've we've seen him on tape. Now, maybe not the same type of production, but but we've seen him in action. And then, and then when we got him here to our football team, we saw him at practice, right, make plays. And and so, um, you know, he 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 just attacks each day, ready to learn, ready to get better. Um, he he's always throwing with Carson. Carson's grabbing him between, 
you know, between periods at practice and, and working on, you know, routes and details of routes and timing of routes. And, and that's what it takes with, with everybody and, and not just one guy, but, you know, it's uh, obviously a pleasant surprise to see him, you know, step up the way he has the last couple of weeks. Jimmy and then Les. Hey, Doug, sorry. Uh, you had the two deep shots to uh, Hightower. One looked like it was set up for him all the way with a max protect look, and he got open, just weren't able to connect. Um, and then you had the other in the back of the end zone at the end of the first half. What did you see on those, and were you encouraged in any way on those plays, um, you know, even though the results weren't there? Yeah, you know, on both plays, I thought I thought he ran, he ran good routes. He was obviously uh, on the first one um, – he was kind of the second second part of that play, uh, you know. It, it's all based on the the safety read and all that, but um, you know Carson had to had to get the ball out just to, just a touch sooner than than he would like. Uh, did did take a shot on the play, but but just just missed uh, by about a yard or so uh, on that one, and um, and then on the second one, you know, with an opportunity in the end zone, had it had he, you know made the play. I'm not sure if he would have been in bounds. Anyway, the ball was kind of carried. The momentum would have been out of the out of the back of the end zone. But for us and for him to kind of put that out there on on tape uh to show, you know, his speed, uh, obviously uh, you know, is something that uh, opponents are going to see and and they're going to be they're going to be aware of that and be cautious of that and um it's something that we can continue to to build up build upon. I am encouraged by by all the young players that, that played in the game yesterday in the last couple of weeks, and those are those are things that we can build upon. Less and then Martin. Hey, Doug. The situation with Zach Ertz, you've had time to look at the game yesterday now. Um, obviously, teams are, are scheming him, but they've done this before. I mean, he's been here a long time. Last year, you didn't have a lot of healthy weapons, and he still caught passes. What is going on? Why is this so ineffective for you right now? One – one catch on six targets. Well, when you when I look at the tape today, um, there were there were a couple of opportunities, you know, for for him to make plays. Um, uh, you know, Carson just the ball sailed a little bit high. You know, we had a red zone uh, route dialed up. We had a false start, you know, in the red zone where where um, Zach had a potential touchdown pass there, and, and so you know, it, it, Carson and Zach got they have to continue to work. I, I haven't seen. Uh, the ball travel as high towards Zach, you know, um, that it is right now. And those are just things as we continue to work through during the week, um, you know, those two guys will be on the same, be on the same page. So it's just a little bit of mistiming right now with those two. Um, But I know it's something that they'll work out and work at and work on, you know, each week to, to get it corrected. Thank you. Go ahead, Martin. And then Mike. Hey, Doug, do you have an update on uh, Lane or Darius? And I think Duke Riley also left as well um, on, the, on any of their statuses. Yeah, um, in, in the case of Lane Johnson, I am waiting. Uh, medically, we're waiting on uh, uh, second opinion. So there's some some reports uh, still coming in uh, on Lane. So I don't have any update yet with him. Uh, obviously, obviously, Darius Slay uh, is in the uh, concussion protocol right now. Um so obviously can't can't comment any further on that. Uh, Duke Riley um, actually came out okay. He was a little banged up in the game, uh, you know. But but he's he's going to be fine. He's going to be okay. Uh, expect him to to be out there this week. Go ahead, Mike, and then Nick. Doug, it seemed like especially in the first half, there were a lot of instances where you could send in plays and penalties and referee calls to the league. I was just wondering after reviewing the film. Uh, can you talk about the Darius Slay PI call? And uh, it appeared in the in during that last drive in the second half, there was actually a, se- a twenty seconds run off the clock, or the clock kept going during that period. Did you see that on film? And have you sent anything to the league? Well, each week, as you know, I mentioned after the game, we'll we'll send a handful of plays, you know, into the league, whether they were called or not, uh, just to get clarification and ruling, um, you know, on 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 some of the some of the plays that were flagged or not flagged right and and um you know it's a, it's a great way for us to to sort of educate our players uh it's hard to see on the coach's copy um you know the 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 d 
DPIs on Darius, um, you know, because it kind of gets out of the frame just a little bit. You have to go to the TV copy. I mean, there, listen, there's there's always going to be hand fighting, you know, down the field, contact, collisions, all of that with, um, you know, defensive backs. And, and those are, you know, they're all subjective, you know, and they're just – they're they're tough you know and um the thing i look at is you know we we had nine penalties overall you know and and that's something that we can't we can't do and of course eight of them were on defense and um we gave them you know five additional first downs in the game and you know those are all things that uh we've we've got to eliminate uh in in order to to win games you know like that nick and then ruben Hi, Doug. Um, having looked at the game now, um, is there anything that jumped out at you uh, as far as your protection uh, packages and schemes and, and that last uh, touchdown by the Steelers where it looked like there was some confusion there and you had uh, you had a linebacker on the receiver, on the wide receiver? Our protection, um, <clears throat> I thought, was, was uh, for the most part, pretty decent. I mean, it's a good pass rush. This is a good front. Um, you know, it's a, it's a high pressure team. They like to blitz, you know, for the most part, our guys, guys held up well, uh, there was some, some internal pressure, but that that's going to happen. Um, you know, and, and Carson was able to get the ball out and, 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 th- and then towards the end of the game, obviously we're trying to shoot the ball down the field, get some chunk plays. So, you know, Carson's going to have to hold on to the ball just a little bit longer, right. Just to allow the routes to, to get to their depth. So, but I thought overall the, the protection was, was decent. Um, you know, and at the end of the game, you know, it's just, um, you know, when, when Ben, I think when Ben, it's, it's as much uh, a, a really good call by, by, by the Steelers and really between Ben and, and Claypool than it was the, the, the call on defense. I mean, he, he saw what was going on. He, he read the coverage, and, and it was just a one-on-one, you know, situation. So, um, you know, you sit here today and we could, we could you know, um, 2020 and – you know, in hindsight and all that, but um, I thought it was more of a, a, a really good recognition by the Steelers and Ben, you know, to make that play. Ruben and then Zach. Hey, Doug, um, at the end of the first half, obviously you guys ran out of time after the uh, 37-yard pass to Jay Jaw. Um, where was the breakdown on that? Is, is that? is that something Carson needs to make sure the ball's closer to the sideline? Or what, what should have happened on that play? Well, I mean, you're asking me to uh, make a comment on a on a great play in the game. I go back to a couple plays before that where, you know, uh, we made we made a rookie mistake, right? We didn't get out of bounds, and and I had to use a timeout in that situation. So, um, you know, we we look at that as coaches and say, okay, we got to we got to coach that situation better. We got to make sure that our receivers understand or ball carriers understand two minute situation. Right, we we over communicate it, over communicate clarity. You get out of bounds in those situations, and you don't have to burn the timeout. Because if I had the timeout on the JJ play, you call the timeout and you kick the field goal right before half. So uh, I thought it was a great play by those two. Uh, Carson made a great throw. JJ made a heck of an over the shoulder catch. He did the right thing, popping up. He brought the ball into the hash so the officials could spot it. And uh, and obviously, and you know, we didn't have the timeout there, so we were trying to hurry up and, and clock it. So. Um, the only thing we could have done better is, is probably gotten out of bounds sooner on a play uh, earlier. That would have, would have saved us a timeout. Zach and Jeff. Hey, Doug, following up on that, on that uh, Chase Claypool fourth touchdown, you said Roethlisberger recognized the matchup. Why was that the matchup, though, that, that you guys went with in that situation? Listen, it was the it was the coverage. It was the defense that was called. It was an empty formation. You know, it's no different when – you know, offensively, and, and we go empty, and, and Carson, I give Carson the play, and then Carson audibles or checks uh, to something, whether it may be a, a quick slant to, you know, Greg Ward or to Miles, or it, he's just, he's, he's understanding the leverage of the defense and, and, and the, uh, uh, the matchup that he likes. And, and so uh, that, was, that was the case, you know, at the end of the game. Uh, we got time for two more. So, Jeff, and then I'm here. I'm here, Doug. Um, so, could you have called timeout when you saw the matchup uh, that you didn't like there? And then uh, could, is there anything the defense could have done on that play? I mean, should Nate have gotten more depth? Should Rodney have been help helping over top? 
I mean, you, you know, you call a timeout, then you you burn a timeout in a situation where you're trying to, you know, stop the stop the defense on a third and what third and seven, third and eight, or stop the offense on a third and seven, third and eight situation. Um, you know, and listen, um, we as coaches have to have to put our players uh, in in situations to be successful, and um, that that falls on that falls on me as the head coach, and I got to make sure that I that I do that and. I didn't want to burn a timeout in that situation um, because I knew that we were going to have to get the ball back, and uh, you know we we could use those those timeouts there. You know, so it, it, listen, it's again, it, it's all about them making a play and recognizing the defense and making a play. Um, I mean, we sit here today and go, okay, yeah, call a different defense. Oh yeah, okay, do this, do that, do you know, and it's. It is what it is. Uh, I mean, they made they made I'm a play, not, and and um, you know. Excuse me, I'm not questioning the call. I'm, I'm wondering about the how the how it was defended though. The, the execution was the execution the way you would you guys would draw it up. Well, ultimately, it was a touchdown. So you know, obviously, we can we can coach the defense and coach the play a little bit better. Um, you know, the awareness of where we were on the field, the down, the distance, all that kind of stuff we teach during the week. Oh, Nick, that's great. That's a great look, Nick. <laughs> that just that just threw me off, Jeff. I'm so I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. Um It was it was only iced tea, Doug. It was just iced tea? Yeah. That was great. Right out of a right out of, out of a half gallon. That was wonderful. <laughs> Jeff, what were we talking about? Uh we're talking about the uh, execution on the faithful touchdown that ended your hopes of actually having a chance to come back and win the game oh there you go so we got we got right to the point thank you um no i mean listen it's 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 about awareness down and distance um you know uh, could nate have maybe backed up a touch and tried to keep the play in front of him sure uh the way the the way the the, the coverage was designed though uh from an empty and then listen it was it was five wides it was empty it was empty there was the safeties had to, had to be wide. I mean, it was again. It was a. Uh, it, it's 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 great execution by the Steelers. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you guys. Um, you know, they recognized the defense and 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 attacked, uh, and got the touchdown. Okay, we'll wrap it up with John Clark here. Hey, sorry, I had to unmute myself. Um, so, Doug, you could possibly have some of your veteran receivers back this week or next week. Um, and you've seen some good things out of the youngsters and you're trying to build chemistry on offense. I saw that you've had the most starters on offense in the NFL. When you go into deciding how much playing time you're going to give your receivers, um, what goes into that in deciding, you know, trying to get some chemistry and get everybody in sync? I mean, you know, you're, you're right. You know, uh, we're, we're hopeful that, uh, you know, Deshaun, um, gets incorporated into practice this week. We're, we're, we're obviously uh, hopeful that, that Alshon, you know, gets back out there this week and, you know, and, and we got to make sure that these two guys obviously are healthy first, right? Number one, and make sure they're a hundred percent heading into heading into the game. But, you know, it's, it's uh, you're, you're right. You're trying to build chemistry. You're trying to build um, a sort of a, a, I guess a package of plays that, that these guys are comfortable with, uh, and at the same time, you're bringing back, hopefully, bringing back a couple of veteran players that could could you know give your offense a boost. So um, we got to see where they are first of all uh, from a health standpoint. Um, you know, we're sitting here today on Monday, and uh, you know we're hopeful, but uh, you know again, you know we're also we're also realistic from the standpoint of you know the guys that are in the game have been playing well. Um, has it been? perfect no it hasn't but you know they're playing hard they're playing fast um and and it's things that we can coach and teach and and uh continue to get better at with these young guys thanks coach thanks guys